In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this simple hexagon cutting jig. I made this sled so I could batch out repeatable, accurate hexagons for another project that I plan to make in the future. I began by making a basic sled using 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I'm using a runner made from UHMW, which is a type of plastic. These runners are machined to fit the miter slot perfectly so I don't have to fuss with it. Plus, they won't be affected by changes in temperature or humidity. Okay, so I've lined up the fence with where I want the board to sit vis-a-vis -vis the blade. You'll notice that the runners are shorter than the board, but that's okay for this particular sled since it won't be moving off the front or the back of the table. I've also skewed the sled to the left because the bulk of the jig will be on that side. Locking my fence into position, I could now remove the board and drop in the runners. Since the runners aren't as deep as the miter slots, I'll need to raise them up with some dimes so they'll touch the plywood when I lay it on top. With the runners in place, I added a few dabs of super glue, then dropped the plywood into position up against the fence. Then after holding it down for a minute, I could pull off the board. With the runners temporarily glued into place, I used a countersink bit to drill some pilot holes into the runners. I could then permanently attach the runners with some screws, making sure the screw heads were fully sunken into the runners. It helps to apply some paste wax to the bottom of the sled, covering all the wood parts with a thin coat. This will really help the sled slide a lot smoother with less friction. After a test fit, I cut the kerf line in the sled, making sure to only go about halfway, no more. So here's what you need to know about a hexagon. It has six sides and all the angles are 120 degrees, and I want to make one that's two inches on each side. First I started by making a small notch next to the kerf line, and this will just be my reference starting point. You can use any type of protractor for this, like one of these, or even a digital angle gauge which would be a lot more accurate. I set the protractor on the edge of the kerf line, centered with the reference mark I made, and then marked out 120 degrees. Then I simply connected the dots. You'll need a few small pieces of plywood for the next part. On the first one, I measured 2 inches since that's the size of the hexagon I want to make. I positioned it so the 2 inch marking lined up with the kerf line and marked off the other end. As you can see I already made the rest of the markings, but we can just pretend I didn't. So here I'm making the second mark at 120 degrees. Now note that it can be tricky to get the angles just right, so you may need to tweak them a little bit to get the jig perfectly dialed in. If I were to build this again, I would probably actually buy a hexagon ceramic tile or something that I could use as a template to get the angles and the dimensions just right. Anyways, after connecting those dots, I used my hot glue gun to secure a piece of plywood up against the line, lining up the corner with the point of the hexagon that I traced out. Now on the other side, it's a little different. I'm going to start off by securing a small piece of plywood using some double-sided tape so I can pull it off afterwards, again butting it up against the line I traced out. I could then place another piece of plywood up against that one and secure it using some hot glue. Once the glue had dried, I could pull up the front piece, but easier said than done. Okay, so let me explain myself a little bit. The reason this front piece needs to be removable is for the first cut. When you start off with a square board, you'll need room to lay it down and make the cut, so that's where the toggle clamp comes into play. I'm going to use this as a simple way to be able to easily remove the board when I don't need it, or on the contrary, lock it down when I do need it. And that's pretty much it! Well, actually, I do recommend adding a back fence just to make the sled easier to maneuver. Other than that, you start with the block removed and make the first cut. After that, put the block back into position and lock it down. Then simply rotate the blank clockwise as you work your way around. Hey, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.